So, as uh, in previous lecture, we have understood how transformer operates, and uh, we have seen that it will having two parts basically that is core and windings, and when primary of this transformer is being supplied from some AC voltage, a flux being established in the core, which is varying quantity alternately at frequency of supply voltage. So, as it is being attached with both the windings, primary as well as secondary, so electromotive forces E1 and E2 are induced in primary as well as secondary. We have seen how these are these are, are mathematically expressed. The varying flux will induce into EMF E1 and E2 in both primary and secondary, which are which will lag from the flux by 90 degree. It has been seen from these equations, and this E1 will oppose this supply voltage V1 as it will try to oppose this because of its nature which is this can be explained by Lenz law polarity of E2 can only be obtained after loading the transformer when it is loaded on secondary let the voltage here be V2 some current I2 will start flowing the secondary winding which will establish some flux phi2 to oppose this phi as per Lenz law and as the transformer will try to maintain this constant for that which will drag to compensate this change it will try to drag much current from the supply which is I1 dash called load component of primary current it will again establish some flux phi1 and this phi1 will be equal and opposite to phi2 so the net flux phi will remain unaltered and transformer will operate on the same voltage for that it is being design. Now in the present lecture we will understand how to draw a phasor diagram for different loading conditions and in the particular in this particular topic we will study the drawing of phasor diagram with the help of the equations which we have learned in the previous lecture. Now let us start with phasor diagram of transformer for different loading conditions. I am taking here the first load which is inductive. Further I will take capacitive load and then for resistive load. For drawing the phasor diagram for a complicated AC network, uh, we must see what is common in complete network. So as we have seen here the flux is a thing which is common to both primary as well as secondary so this has to be taken as reference so let this be for RL load now flux phi is taken as reference and this is produced by magnetizing current I mu and as we know that phi is proportional to y so this I mu has to be in phase with this phi so let this be I mu as we have said earlier the I mu and I c will be the terminal component of I naught so this will be I c and resultant of I C and I mu will be no load current and due to this flux E1 and E2 are induced in primary as well as secondary and which are 90 degree lagging behind phi so they may be on this line let this be E1 and this be E2. Where it will they will lie that depends on number of turns in primary and secondary. Now as we see that in no load condition the I naught current in primary is quite less, it is almost 
3 to 5 percent of again the primary current. So I know is quite less. In that case, we can assume that there is no considerable drop in primary circuit at no load condition. So we can say that E1 will be equal and opposite to V1. So we can draw like this V1 is equal to minus E. This angle is called theta naught and is called no load angle. Theta naught is called no load angle and cos theta naught is called no load power factor. Now let us start with loading condition of secondary. As you load the secondary by some load, here I am taking the nature of load is inductive, that is RL load. In that case, the load current will lag from the load voltage by some angle, which is being decided by the power factor of the load. Let this angle be theta 2. So, if this is if this is voltage, load voltage V2, this is voltage across load V2 and this is load current I2, then the angle between V2 and IT, I2, sorry, I2 is uh, theta 2. This theta 2 may be, may be termed as, theta 2 may be termed as load angle and cos of theta 2 will be load power factor. Now as you see that this current, load current I2 will establish a flux I2 and that phi2 is proportional to I2. So it can be drawn in the direction of I2, let this be phi2. To compensate this flux phi2, a current I1 does start flowing in primary circuit which is called load component of primary current. So this has to be just opposite to this I2 so that phi1 and phi2 can be neutralized each other. So we can say this is I1 dash and the flux produced by this will be in proportion to this. So will be in phase that is phi1. This phi1 and phi2 will be equal and opposite to each other. So they will neutralize the effect of each other. Now the net primary current is I2, sorry, net secondary current is I2 and net primary current will be I0 plus I1 dash. So these two currents, current components of primary circuit can be added together to find out resultant primary current. So using parallelogram law, these two can be added like this and this will be resultant primary current. So this is phase diagram at no load condition and on load condition. Some more things can be added here as we have seen some equations yesterday of our previous lecture that V1 is equal to E1 plus I1 Z1 the same can be rewritten as E1 as E1 bar plus I1 R1 plus J times I1 X1 this is V1 which is obtained by applying KVL in primary circuit. So if this is shown here then V1 can be find out by using E1 plus I1 R1 plus I1 J I1 X1. I1 R1 is voltage drop in the resistance of primary circuit. I1 X1 is voltage drop in reactance of the primary circuit. So when this, these drops are being added together with E1 dash that is electromotive force induced we will find V1.
As we know, if you multiply some vector by some scalar, we will found a vector. So, if i1 is in this direction and we are going to multiply this by r1, which is scalar quantity, we will found a vector i1, r1, in direction of i1. And we are going to add with this e1. So, a line parallel to this i1 corresponding to i1, r1 can be drawn here as this. I1, R1, and here it is I1, X1 will be in the same direction this, so it can be drawn here to add, but as it, as you can see from the equation, it is multiplied by J operator, which means one angle 90. That means if any vector is multiplied by J operator, it will rotate anti-clockwise by 90 degree. So, this vector i1, x1 will be here, when it is being added here, it can be drawn here, but as it is multiplied by j, so it will rotate like this by 90 degree. So, this will be j, i1, x1, let this be like this. So, now e1 plus I1 R1 plus J I1 X1. The resultant is what? It is V1. So this vector, this vector will represent V1. You can see from here, this is I1 R1 voltage drop in resistance, this is I1 X1 voltage drop in reactance. So if these two vectors are added together, we will find voltage drop in primary circuit. So you can see, this will be I1 Z. Similarly, we have seen that V2 and E2 are related with each other by this equation. We have seen there E2 is equal to V2 plus I2 Z2 which can be rewritten in the form V2 plus I2 R2 plus J times I2 X2 for these equations, for these equations 1 and 2 you can say, you may refer my previous video. Here, to obtain E2, we have to add I2, R2 and J times I2, X2 with V2. So, so here it is I2, that is I2, R2 vector will lie in this direction. So, V2 and here it may be I2 R2 again another vector I2 X2 for the same reason it will be like this but as it is multiplied by J it will rotate by anti clock by density in anti clockwise direction. So this is I2 X2 and this is J I2. J I2 X2 and again this can be I2 R2 plus J I2 X2 will be voltage drop in secondary that is I2 Z2. This angle between V1 and I1 will be called theta1 which can be said supply angle supply angle and cosine of this angle theta 1 will be supply power one thing must be noted here 
this condition v1 is equal to minus e1 is for no load that is when we add the diagram of loading condition here this will be this v1 will not be equal to e1 this v1 will become this v1 because now the drop work are considerable so i i ex expect that you all have understood this for phasor diagram for other loading conditions like capacitive load and for resistive load will be dealt in next video thank you